Hello.
All mine. Do you need something? I come from anyone else, I'd say they were drunk or crazy. But that look in your eyes, I believe you. I can pay you, but it ain't much for what you pulled off. I'll get on the ham radio first thing and tell people all about you, though.
Hey there. What's new? Yeah? I can't believe you actually got one. Give me a bit to get the recipe set up, then talk to me again. This is incredibly good. Here's your omelet, and the recipe if you ever want to make your own. It takes a bit of skill to get it tasting right. Sure thing. All right, then. Looks like we booted the Legion out of Nelson. About damn time. Hey, welcome aboard. This post isn't someplace a civilian ought to be. Ranger Station Alpha. Ranger Lineholm is in command here. Just the usual. Legion scouts try to slip across the river a couple of times a week, but they always end up floating downriver with holes in their heads. I'm not really much of a historian. The short version is that the Rangers are the elite of the NCR military. Best fighters in the wasteland. I'm not really much of a historian. Don't get killed out there.
Welcome to the 188 Slop and Shop. How can I help you? Name's Michelle. My dad and me run this store. His name's Samuel. I take the day shift and he takes nights. We came here about a month ago when Prim went to hell on account of the prison break north of there. Found a bin to call home and set up shop. There's more to the 188 than meets the eye. Troops move back and forth on 93 all the time, and 95 is how NCR folks come and go from Vegas. No shortage of customers, so long as Legion raids south of here don't get worse anyways. You do know these old roads were numbered, right? We're standing where the 95 and 93 meet, and 95 plus 93 equals 188. Not much. I hear some folks got killed down by Nelson. Or was it Novak? I don't know. If they come up this way, me and Dad will go someplace else. Have a look. Pleasure doing business with you. Later. Welcome to the 188 Slop and Shop. Like our slogan says, <laughs> it's better than nothing. Let me see what I can do. You bet. Samuel Kerr at your service. Me and my daughter Michelle run this fine establishment. We came here from Prim about a month past. Doesn't look like much, but it's one hell of a location. Michelle and I ran a little shop in Prim till the prison break north of town spoiled it for everyone. Goddamn convicts just about shut down I-15. When traffic dried up, we took to our heels to find us some customers. I'm not one to sit around waiting to get saved, and Michelle ain't neither. When 15 shut down, 95 became the route NCR citizens used to get to the Strip, or limp back home, after the Strip's drained them of caps. We get them coming and going. Coming, the suckers flush with caps they saved to gamble on the Strip. And going, the same folks, but now they're losers who'll trade you the shirt off their backs so they don't starve before they make it back home. Add in the troopers marching back and forth from McCarran and the dam, and well, let's just say we don't miss Prim. No offense, but you look like you've traveled a long way down some bad roads. Where'd you come from? Huh. Well, in that case, I take it back. You look pretty good, given the circumstances. Well, welcome then. I'm Veronica. I live in a hole in the ground. Well, a bunker, if you want to get technical. I think it sounds more interesting my way. But I'm not there much anymore. I'm usually out here picking up food and supplies for my family, whatever they need. Yeah, I'm not worried. They can handle themselves. But somebody has to get the groceries, know what I mean? And actually these days, I think they'd rather have me out here anyway. But that's a whole other story. So listen. Can I ask you something on the level? I had a run-in with this group calling themselves the Brotherhood of Steel. Pretty strange bunch. Do you know anything about them? Well, that shouldn't be a problem for me. I can't afford anything like that. Hey, so where are you headed anyway? Ooh, very exciting. Gonna strike it rich, huh? I'll be honest. You're the first person I've run across out here that looks like he can really handle himself. There are places I've never been to that'd be too dangerous for just me. What do you think? Maybe we could travel together, help each other out. Hmm. Good. That's the look I was going for. Trust me on this one, though. You'll be glad you brought me along. If I turn out to be a burden, we can part ways at any time. No hard feelings. Like I said, they can handle themselves. And I'm not the only one getting supplies for them. It's a big family. Oh, no, we're in particular, really. Just hoping to see more of the world, looking for a fresh perspective. I want to see how different groups have adapted to survive in the Mojave. See if there's something I can learn from. 
Aw, you really know how to make a girl feel like a stray cat. But, okay, my offer stands, if we run into each other again. doing fine today. I don't have a mama or papa anymore. I see them sometimes when I take off my medicine, but they can't stay. I'm pretty used to being on my own. Oh, I don't sell things, mister. I sell thoughts. That's not junk. That's other people's thoughts. People had to think to make them, and the thoughts got stuck inside. I need other people's thoughts to fill my head when I'm not thinking myself. Otherwise, it's kind of empty. I can take off my medicine and do some thinking. People say it's real interesting. I don't know, because I never hear it. Some people say that it's a gift. Other people say it's the kind of thinking anyone could do if they watched more than they talked. I don't know which is true. I see a lot. I think a lot. There's a lot to hear through the 188, too. That maybe accounts for the thinking. This thing on my head is headache medicine. It works real good, except I can't think when it's on. Really think, I mean. Great! What do you want me to think about? I can think about you, here, or everywhere. What do you want? Let me take off my medicine. Bull and bear over the dam at each other's throats. But a light from Vegas? Ball spinning on the wheel. More than two at the table. Placing bets. All lose in different ways. A dam of corpses. Towns of corpses. Scattered across the sand. But whose? In what shares? Even the dealer doesn't know. Forecast? A rain of blood will flood the desert and not purify it. Blah. Thinking about everywhere always makes me feel a little sick. Oh, I don't know anything, mister. I just think it. And then, I don't. So long. Is there some reason I should be talking to you? Am I selling? Yeah. Am I selling to you? No. Sorry to hurt your feelings, but you're small time. You belong. You might be onto something. I like to hang on to any weapons mods I run across. Take a look. Give me a shout if you need anything else. <laughs> like you have a clue what that even means. The Gunrunners have been putting rapid-fire death-dealing in the hands of anyone who needed to defend himself for over a century. We're the NCR's number one supplier of weapons and ammunition. You might call us an unofficial branch of the army. I'm a salesman. I swing through McCarran and the dam once a week or so to take orders. But lately, I spend most of my time in this piss heap. Ever since the 15 shut down, all caravans come through here, right to me. I check the stock and direct deliveries onward to meet orders. Sure, it stinks to hang out here, but it won't be forever. Plus, I can afford a monthly bender on the strip and still build up my nest egg. There's usually a gun merchant hanging around topside. I'm sure she'll take care of you. Take a look. Not much to tell. A Brahmin or two loaded up with weapons, and a whole mess of well-armed guards to make sure it ends up where it's supposed to. One nifty bit, though. The gun cases are rigged to explode, so trying to loot one of our caravans doesn't do much good. And that's how the NCR stays equipped. The only thing we don't bring in is energy weapons. We used to, but every caravan carrying them was getting ambushed and wiped out. By someone sophisticated enough to know which was which. 
We think it was the Brotherhood of Steel. Those crazies always go hard for energy weapons. But the NCR would rather pretend they killed all of them. Later. It's always good for business. We're just the NCR. Alexander's the man to talk to. Nelson. Welcome to Repcon Headquarters, Rocketeer. Come all this way to see our little facility, have you? I'm here to answer any and all questions you may have, within specified parameters. And if you'd like, I can provide a tour of our museum. I can answer whatever questions you'd like, provided your query is limited to Repcon history, research and development, or Robco. Revcon's illustrious history began way back in 2054, shortly after the famous Delta XI rocket was completed and launched. Revcon's initial focus was on the development of fuel to be used in orbital propulsion in response to the energy crisis of 2052. Sad times indeed. The company really took off when Robco purchased Revcon in late 2076 to develop unmanned rockets to explore the solar system. Very well. Feel free to ask me more about Repcon at any time. Don't be shy. The tour showcases Repcon's amazing scientific contributions and the promise of many more, coupled with its parent company, Robco. Excellent, excellent. Please be patient. The tour will begin in just a moment. Ready for the Repcon tour, Rocketeers? Courtesy of the fine folks at Robco, I'll be your guide today on the path of scientific Discovery! In the lead line case behind me is a spent radioactive rod from one of our old reactors. No need to stand too close. Let's move along, shall we? Here, a row of multicolored plasma fumes. Careful, they may look safe to drink, 
but your stomach is the last place they should be. Why the difference in cylinder size? Refining our production methods has resulted in higher yields of fuel over time. That's why. To my right, you can see a sample of some old safety barrels Repcon once used to store re- Reactive waste. Perfectly safe. On my left, is an example of a mountain of Repcon safety barrels some legislators claim are poisoning our environment. Ridiculous. Behind me is our most recent rocket project, which we're keeping under our hats until launch, if you'll pardon the expression. And in front of me is a model, not actual size, of the launch dome we are using to send our rockets streaming into orbit. Now these colorful fellows behind me are Repcon's earliest experiments in flight. Feel free to read the plaques and learn, Rocketeers. donation from Robco, this next exhibit showcases the wondrous world of robots. Around you are the incredible iBot, the fearsome sentry bot, and the <laughs> always helpful Mr. Handy. That helpfulness runs through our whole line. stop on our tour. This model of our solar system is a small example of where the partnership between Rockco and Repcon hopes to go. See those little rockets zipping about? They are manned by robots, tirelessly looking for resources to mine on planets beyond our own. And that's it for our tour today, Rocketeers. Robco and its tiny partner, Repcon, thank you. Any further questions? Please, feel free to ask. Yes? Did you have a qu- Goodbye, Rocketeer. Be sure to visit again. Oh, and please, for your own safety, stay outside of restricted areas.
Stay outside of restricted areas. How may I serve you, Master? facial pattern detected.
floor access is for executives only. Please identify. Invalid response. You have 30 seconds to vacate before security is alerted. Hello, Mrs. Millet. I hope you have an excellent day at work today. Sit tight.
third floor access is for executives only. Please identify. Incorrect. Security alert. You have 30 seconds to vacate before security is alerted. I've got your back. How may I serve you, Master? Valid facial pattern detected. You have an excellent day at work today. Be sure to visit again. Oh, and please, for your own safety, stay outside of restricted areas. Still making a nuisance of you? Take a look. Thanks. Later.